In this video, we're gonna be talking about the CompTIA Security Plus SY0601. We're gonna be talking about what's on the exam. What is the CompTIA Security Plus? What should you prepare for whenever you're preparing for the CompTIA Security Plus? Where can I find uh, resources for the Security Plus? All of that starting right now. Okay, so first off, what is the CompTIA Security Plus? The CompTIA Security Plus, simply explained by StudioSec, is a certification that's kind of considered the fundamentals certification on cybersecurity. It, uh, it's one way to think of it is it's a mile long and a foot thick. It is uh, encompassing of a lot of different things and it goes into a pretty good amount of detail on each one of those things. So to say that the exam is a little challenging uh, can be a little bit of an understatement. Um, but that being said, it is a, a completely rewarding exam. Uh, it is, uh, I wanna say it's around like $250. Uh, it's relatively affordable. You can get it for around or below $300 and occasionally you'll be able to find vouchers online uh, that will be able to get you discounts on the Security Plus. And it's about 90 questions, or it can be up to 90 questions within 90 minutes. And those questions can be all kinds of different things. But the exam is absolutely manageable. You can totally take it and pass on the first try. That's what I did, um, and I'm not very smart. So if there's proof that that can be done, take it from me. But today we're gonna be talking about what's on the exam so you can best prepare. And one of the first things that you should be looking at for the CompTIA Security, for the CompTIA Security Plus is the exam objectives. And I have these pulled up right here. I'll have a link down in the description. But this is really what I'm going off of whenever I'm building the CompTIA Security Plus study guide on this channel. Yeah, that's right. You can find videos on my channel uh, that'll prepare you. There's a playlist another link in the description uh, that can help get you prepared. So just kind of scrolling down, it'll give you, you know, the about the exam, uh, all kinds of cool details. Uh, here you got maximum of, of 90 questions. You got 90 minutes to, to get it done. You need to score uh, 750 out of 900 in order to pass this exam. And the types of questions you'll get will be multiple choice and performance based. It, it can be a pretty uh, challenging exam. Definitely take your time through it. Now let's talk about the five domains. And this has changed. There used to be six domains in the 501. Uh, and you'll kind of see some differences here. But we're going to talk about the five domains that you need to cover whenever you're preparing for the CompTIA Security Plus. First, we got attack starts and vulnerabilities. That's 24%. Uh, Domain number two is architecture and design. That's 21% of the exam. Then we got uh, implementation. That's 25% of the exam. So already we got just a bulk of the exam. This is about 69% of the exam that is uh, that, that covers the first three domains. The remaining, uh, what is that, 31%? Quick maths. Uh, we got domain number four, operations and incident response at 16%, and then we got governance, risk, and compliance at 14%. So don't slack on these two domains. They're absolutely important, and they can be just absolutely incredible uh, opportunities in the future, uh, especially op operations and incident response. If you're on a blue team, that's pretty important, right? Same with governance, risk, and compliance, especially if you're wanting to get into a management kind of role, you'll be spending a lot of your time there. So scrolling down, we'll look at, you know, domain number one, threats, attacks, and vulnerabilities. We got different types of social engineering attacks, and you can see all of this. I mean, we got so many different kinds of, of social engineering attacks that you need to be prepared of. What's the difference between spear phishing and normal phishing? Spear phishing is targeting an individual. Uh, you know, you got all kinds of just crazy stuff going on here. And so it's important to be able to break these things down. Then we got different types of attacks. And we got malware, we got password attacks, physical attacks, uh, AI. That's, I mean, I wanna say that that's fairly, like one of the newer uh, things that you'll have to learn about. Um, cryptographic attacks. Then we got, uh, you know, indicators. And, 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 you know, indicators of compromise. And, and different things that might give you an idea that there's an application uh, attack. You got privilege escalation. So if you're watching some of the uh, some of the live streams I'm doing or other videos on uh, hack the box or try hack me, I mean, you gotta do privs to get uh, the root ticket, right? And that's something that adversaries are doing to get data and to get you know more access to your network. Um, and just kind of looking through here, 
a lot of this is just covering all kinds of stuff, but it's not necessarily stuff that you'll only see. You know, you'll see some of this in like CTF. CTFs can be a great way to kind of get, you know, a practical idea on what privilege escalation looks like. But for this, this is more focusing on the academic concept. And it's not just stuff that you'll be seeing in like hack the box or try hack me. For instance, wireless attacks. You're not going to be seeing that very often. You'll see it in pen testing. But, uh, you know, if you're not doing that, then you're probably not going to see it that much unless you're doing it in a personal lab. Uh, you got all kinds of just insane stuff going on here. Different threat vectors, intelligence sources. I'm trying to fly through here because if I really start breaking down these concepts, <laughs> then this video is going to go on forever. And honestly, I've already broken down a lot of these concepts. You can check it out in the study guide. And if I haven't, it's coming soon. So hit that subscribe button. We got different research so sources, which is kind of sick for the intelligence sources here. Uh, we got different threat vectors, so we got actors and threats, like uh, state actors, that's kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, this is really just covering, you know, your your attacks, threats, and what was it, vulnerabilities. So, you know, it's a very broad subject. Those are some very important, uh, you know, concepts that you got to understand, but they are encompassing of just an incredible amount. So definitely spend a lot of time going through and make sure that you understand all of this stuff. Uh, because you will be seeing it again. And if you're not seeing it on the test, uh, then you'll be seeing it in real life. So it's it's not only relevant to, don't think of it as, you know, you're just taking this for the exam. Think of it as you're taking it so whenever you show up to work, you are you are equipped to, uh, to do it. If you're wanting to get into pen testing, I mean, you gotta know these like by heart, you know? This, this exam should be easy. Uh, so, yeah, that's kind of one of those things. Point number two, architecture and design. Now, if you have a networking background or if you've passed the Network Plus, this might be slightly easier for this. And the Network Plus is kind of like a certification by CompTIA on networking. I haven't taken it, but if you have like a, you, you know, if you want to kind of certify that you are good with networking and that you have a good grasp on networks, that's a good certification that you should get. But architecture and design is really kind of covering a lot of that a lot of that information here you got some cloud model stuff so that's kind of cool a lot of a lot of these updates are, are kind of accommodating for changes to infosec a lot of things are moving into the cloud and so this exam is kind of starting to indicate that yes it is moving into the cloud and we as professionals need to be prepared to uh, to work with that so kind of going back down through here we're seeing all kinds of really uh, you know just Cool stuff, we're getting some biometrics. Now, a lot of the stuff that you might be seeing in the networking or in the architecture and design side is you're not only focused on, you know, conceptually what is an access point and conceptually, you know, what is uh, like defense in depth, but how do you, you know, what are good ways to place an access point in a building, you know, and, and like, you know, what kind of antenna do you need? So some of it's pretty practical. Uh, that you can use later. Like if, if you're working for a smaller company and maybe they're wanting to expand and build a new building, you can be a resource uh, and help them kind of decide, you know, hey, how do we want to build a network out in this building? And how do we you know where do we want to place the access points? You know, so this can be a very good exam to take. Of course, redundancy, that's an important word to know. Redundancy, redundancy, redundancy. Uh, if, if there's a phrase out there, if you have one, you have none. So you want to have more. You, you want to have more than just one. That goes for any any anything. So like redundant array of inexpensive disks, right? So if if one uh, if one series of disks go down, you know you still can get access to your data because you have redundancy. You have extra storage that has that data that you need. Same with load balancers. If your primary servers that are you know handling your customer requests, if they go down. What are you gonna do? You, you got load balancers. That's where load balancers come in. So now kind of uh, continuing to scroll down here, we got some IOT. That's good to see, love that. Specialized, so we got medical systems, vehicles, aircraft, and smart meters. That's kind of cool. Uh, you know, if, if, you're, if you're wanting to work, you know, for instance, in a hospital, which you know, they're in desperate need of cybersecurity professionals. So if you're wanting to do that, good on you. That is awesome. Uh, but, you know, you got to know about some of the medical systems, right? Same with aircraft uh, and, and how those work. There was an issue, I want to say, with the, um, seven, with the 7, was it the 737? 
let me know down in the comments. But I wanna say that one of the issues that it was having was with the computer systems and there was some sort of vulnerability that they found that <laughs> was a bit of an issue. So we're kind of going down. We got some physical security controls. One of the things that, you know, there's two phrases that you want to think about here. There's cybersecurity, and that's security in cyberspace. But really, we're all working in, info, in infosec, in information security, right? And that's not only covering, like, cybersecurity as a subset. That's also covering physical security. How do we protect our people, and how do we protect the physical data that exists? And the physical machines, right? And the, and the infrastructure. And that's where you're going to learn about barricades. And you're going to learn about lighting, like proper lighting and secure data destruction. I can't exactly, it, my, I'm pretty young in my career uh, and I've actually had situations where I've had these, dis, I've had these discussions talking about physical security c considerations uh, where I am. And so you gotta be prepared for some of this. Like you, you have to have an answer at the very least. You gotta know where you can go to get an answer. And so again, that's one of those things that I was like, man, I'm so happy I took that past the security plus because I, I felt like I had answers. I felt like I knew, you know, like some of these things that we had to, you know, talk about. And so uh, make sure that you don't neglect the physical security controls. No, it's not, you know, some of the other quote unquote cybersecurity stuff, but it is just as important if not more so. Cause your everyday criminal probably isn't a cyber criminal and they're just gonna try to break in physically. So, you know, <laughs> you know, it's great that you have that you're really good at cybersecurity, but if you suck at physical security, like what was the point? Here we got different cryptographic concepts. Uh, and this actually used to be a whole you know section in the last exam, but and I want to say that this actually is it's still a section. Let's scroll up here. Oh no, that's legit. Yeah. Okay. So this, so this used to be an entire section in the last, uh, in the last version, I believe. And now it's just a, a section. So that's good. But that being said, you still got to know about all of this because you're going to be encountering this again. Now we got implementation. Here we got all the different protocols that you need to know. You know, if you you need to know about all the main protocols, like what is uh, port 21, 22, 23, 25, 80, you know, 443. Uh, you know, if you can name these ports out uh, just off memory, then, you know, you're going to be in a good place. Here we got application security solutions, uh, hardening kind of a, a phrase, right? But it's really covering, you know, just all kinds of steps that you're taking to harden your systems, right? Uh, and then sandboxing, that's a good thing that, you know, you, you're going to want to know in the real world. <laughs> and in your home lab, which, you know, I hope that you're working in a home lab. Uh, and I hope that you're doing that in a sandboxed environment and not just on your host OS because that's a great way to break something and that's a bad deal. Next, we got secure network designs. Uh, and, you know, here we got like VPNs, network segmentation. Uh, you know, just all kinds of really good stuff here. Security segments or security settings, right? So, you know, like your cryptographic protocols. So like WPA2, and I wanna say whenever the last version of the exam was coming out, WPA3 was considered new, but I mean, I guess it could still be considered new, but um, you know, WPA3 is the, 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 I guess, new version of, uh, of Wi-Fi or of wireless, you know, protected access, Wi-Fi protected access. And we got some mobile solutions. Mobile security is never gonna go anywhere. It's or it's it's not going away. Everyone ha I mean, we all have phones, right? And those phones are more powerful than, than computers used to be uh, in an office environment, what, 15 years ago? I mean, even 10 years ago, it's, it's crazy. And they're only becoming more and more powerful. And those things are little spy devices. They've got a camera, a microphone, a GPS. They can network. They've got Bluetooth. So if you get if you get malware on a cell phone and then you literally walk it in and you connect it to a network, that could be a problem. And so you know you're going to have all kinds of different deployment methods, like you know bring your own device, uh, or you know the company issues you a device and you're not allowed to bring your own device to work. So you know, definitely be prepared for those. Got some cloud security stuff. A lot more cloud security stuff than on the 501. That's good. And we got 
<clears throat> identity and account management controls. Uh, one of the things that you're going to want to remember is the principle of least privilege. Uh, you know, users should only have only the, the privileges that they need to have for only the amount of time that they need to have it and no longer. And then you revoke it. We got implement authentication, authorization solutions. Got all kinds of uh, cool ways that you can do that. Got your key infrastructure. This is one of the things that definitely you're gonna wanna know about because you're gonna be seeing it. <laughs> Not just on the exam, but in the real world, right? And so, yeah, they got all kinds of just crazy stuff. This was honestly one of the sections that I was having a tough time with. I'm not like a, I'm not a computer science-y kind of guy. I feel like if I were to just kind of fall into my comfort area in cybersecurity, it would absolutely be like risk, governance, and compliance. Uh, that stuff is fun to me. But, and so kind of digging into some of the super technical stuff, uh, it's a challenge. It, it took some time to study. Then you got operations and incident response. Again, this is kind of one of the, the smaller sections on the test, equally as important though, uh, and maybe even more relevant to your day-to-day -day just because the, the operations and incident response, I mean, it's in the title. It's, it's You're gonna need to know about it. So you got all kinds of uh, like exercise, like tabletop walkthrough simulation. Cool, you're gonna be seeing this. MITRE ATT&CK, this is a really cool resource. Let me know down the, com down the comments if you wanna see some of these in videos. Like, I feel like I could do a whole video about MITRE ATT&CK, it's pretty cool. The Cyber Kill Chain, uh, you know, these are pretty cool stuff. We'll definitely be covering all of this in a future video, but if you want something like just more specifically broken down, comment down below, let me know. I'll make a note of it and, and get it done. Here we got uh, different ways to support an in investigation. Sims, you're gonna be seeing that. We've done a video on that. Uh, techniques and controls to secure an environment. Uh, and then so a lot of it kind of ties into other sections, right? Like architecture and design. If you want to segment a machine, uh, you know, do you have a separate network that is kind of like your your isolated network that you can just put them in? Or, and then do your, you know, your sandbox work. Do you have, you know, a segmented network for, uh, you know, testing and dev? Because you wouldn't want that in your pro in your production environment. And then of course we got digital forensics and a lot of this is gonna go to legal, right? <laughs> and chain of custody, you know? Because uh, this is all gonna be reported. Uh, a lot of it gets put out to law enforcement and that's when, you know, cybersecurity gets super serious. So definitely something to take seriously there. And then of course we got governance, risk, and compliance. Uh, we got the different types of controls, right? Uh, we got all these different standards. These standards are good to know about. Um, and there's, there's more than what you're seeing here. HIPAA is one that you'll see if you're working in medical and FERPA is one that you're going to be dealing with if you're working in like a university environment. So, you know, there's more than what's listed in here, but these will kind of get you going. And you got these like acceptable use policies and other kinds of personnel policies. One of the things I want to do on this channel is start, you know, we can, you can write custom policies, right? And that's something that I'm wanting to do on this channel is like, let's write a password policy. So you can kind of see what that looks like. And if you want to use that, you can use it, right? <clears throat> Next is summarize risk management process and processes and concepts. Disaster, uh, you know, one of the things is like it's it could be an environmental disaster, right? Like a tornado or a hurricane or something like that it could be man-made. Uh, so you're you're gonna want to be prepared for that. And that, I mean that counts towards security because it's availability, right? Um, you can't have much of a, a network or access. You can't keep business going if the building gets destroyed by a tornado. So if you want to keep business going 24-7, that's where, you know, maybe you have an alternate site that can handle requests while you're, you know, kind of sorting things out there. Next is explain privacy and sensitive data concepts. Uh, pretty important stuff. You got all this stuff right here. So, and then of course here at the end, you got acronyms and there's a billion acronyms. I mean, cybersecurity is a pretty acronym heavy industry. So definitely take some time, make sure that you understand these acronyms because, uh, you're going to be seeing them again. So that, so that is the CompTIA Security Plus, uh, SY0601. Uh, it covers a lot of it covers a lot of stuff. I, a lot of it definitely is different from whenever I took it, but it is very important to 
you know, to go back through it and uh, and make sure that you know the, the, the different concepts. Because again, you'll be seeing it in the real world. Um, it's not just a test concept, you know, it's easy in like, you know, maybe high school or, or, or you know, even like prereqs in college, you'd be like, this is like so abstract, like you're never going to see this again. But this is kind of one of those exams that you will be seeing it again and probably right after you take the exam you know like maybe you'll have an interview uh for a job and they might ask you some of this stuff and you know if you pass the exam you're good to go right so let me know if this was helpful at all like the like this video comment down below with any of the stuff about you know that we talked about on this uh video and subscribe i'll be posting more about that study guide and I will be posting more just about other cybersecurity stuff that is good to follow along. So that, see you next time.